Oh, look at that. We made it. Phone says we're live. Showtime. Showtime indeed. We are, what is that, nine hours, eight and a half hours from Celtics box? Is it 7.30? 7.30 tip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Allegedly. 7:30. It'll be a little bit later. It's never on and time. ESPN's grubby hands off of my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Chapa. Welcome in. Uh, I will say I'm significantly less excited for this game now. I don't really <laughs> – it is. It took all the fun out of it. Uh, you still have to win. Did. No, Giannis, you do have to win, but now it's a lose-lose for the Celtics. If you win, you're supposed to win. If you lose, it's a disaster, which is not nearly as fun as, as playing a team. I mean, the title of the stream is this is this is prove it game. Like this is a chance for them to prove that, you know, according to some people uh, in the media that, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know if they can do it like this. You got to win all the big games if you're the Celtics, because then all the others don't matter uh, if you don't. But now this game, like the others, doesn't matter. It yeah, I don't matter. know how you can have more questions going into the playoffs about the Celtics than the Bucks. That seems ridiculous to me. Also, I will say that the Celtics, you know, the schedule has softened. So it would have been nice to get Milwaukee at full strength and the Bucks are seven and three in their last 10 games. So it, it would have been good, as you said, to stay sharp here. But hey, they also beat the Suns on Sunday without Giannis in the lineup. And even though it felt like Porzingis played Monday as a tune-up with this in mind, especially with the structure of his shifts where he goes the first 6-12 in the first quarter, sits the entire second quarter, then comes back and plays the third quarter into the start of the fourth. So it felt like they very much were addressing his conditioning and his stamina with this matchup targeted, but... Here we are, and it'll just be about the Celtics to kind of once again, even though you respect what the Bucks bring to the court still, it'll be more about the Celtics once again competing with themselves, so to speak. Yeah, it's going to be a big, hey, Celtics, how are you going to guard Dame? What's your defense going to look like when they're running them off of screens? Who's going to go up? Who's going to be the primary defender? Are you going to target him? What are you going to do on offense in the playoffs? Are you going to isolate him? How are you going to exploit him? It's really about that wrinkle of the matchup today. I don't think you're going to see everything Joe has to offer on that. He likes to keep tricks up his sleeve, but that's what you have to look forward to today as Giannis uh, grips his tight hamstring and says, I'm not playing as if he's like a a bad guy wrestler that won't fight till the pay-per-view. It's the same thing. He's like Celtics fans paid for tickets to see this matchup. Nope, not playing. Won't be there. I mean, I think to your point, it might be smarter for Joe to just not do anything super like in in depth in this game. Like what's the point of breaking out all these potential, you know, fixes to guarding Dame or guarding Giannis isn't playing or like guarding the box or or attacking the box. If it doesn't matter by the time the playoffs roll around, like at this point, I'm, I'm team. Don't show him anything. Like, don't let him see anything. You're actually just not play anybody. (laughs) That well, actually I, be kind of fire. That would be took, like an I raise you moment by the Celtics. Like, okay, Tatum, Brown, Porzingis, all out. We don't care either. Well, I tweeted this morning, like Brown and Holiday are already questionable. Like, I wouldn't play them on the Celtics. Like, well, what's the point? Yeah. They're not playing Giannis. Like, you might as well just roll with Tatum, KP, and Al and see what you got. Um, I don't know. You're taking. I, I totally too. agree with that. I tend to err on the side of caution, and in a situation like this, why not? Rest some of the guys, maybe Porzingis, you just brought him back. And instead of going, I wouldn't say it was 100 on Monday, but whatever you want to rank that as all the way down to two days off, maybe he plays. I know everyone wants to keep him in bubble wrap. I get that. But yeah, sit Tatum again, sit Jalen, who's dealing, you know, I know they keep calling it now. It's the right ankle sprain. But the the other thing that I'm not going to be able to pronounce correct, the sacriliac strain or whatever you know, huh. just because of the concerns of any lingering effects there, why not be cautious and sit your, some of your star players? This is our day. We all show up. We buy the uniform, warm ups and all, <laughs> see if they'll play us. This could be Joe's day. I still have the make believe theory that Joe Missoula is gunning for that 15th roster spot. They should trot him out there today. Give him some minutes. Let him cover Dame. Let him chase him around. Missoula's reputation as a player was a defensive menace. That's what you need. That is the trick up the sleeve for the playoffs is to put Missoula out there and have him chase Dame around. So, yeah, Milwaukee ruined this game. Thanks, Milwaukee.
I'd pay a lot of money to watch Joe Missoula out there hanging out, just Garden Dame. That'd be very fun. I agree. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it just seems like it's unfortunate that uh, Giannis isn't playing. Um, I saw Jam Packer tweet something like, oh, man, what the hell? Like, risk further injury for my entertainment. Come on, man. Like, come on. <laughs> Play in the game. Um, it's It's annoying. I don't know. Maybe when you said it and I missed it, but has he like missed multiple games in a row or is this the first one he's missed in a while? He, he missed, missed their last Phoenix. Sunday. With, <clears throat> okay. So they won without him against the Suns. They yes. killed the Suns. Yeah. They scored a billion points. Suns stink. It was one of those <laughs> games where Phoenix shot almost 60% and still lost by double digits. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't close. Yeah. Now the, the Bucks yeah. have played a lot better of late, but they still struggle against teams that shoot well. And the concerns about them, even with their defense improving, haven't gone away and aren't going to. And why ultimately, I think it's going to be what sinks them in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Uh, I mean, the defense has always been a problem. And I know there was this whole like push post All-Star break, like, oh, it's back. They're playing like the the Bulls and the Hornets and all these teams. Yeah, of course it's back, right? Like, let's not let's not make a mountain out of a molehill here. But um I don't know. I, I don't know how in on the Bucks I am. Are you guys like when we did the whole, oh, who's the biggest threat to the Celtics in the playoffs? It's still Bucks to me, but like I truly don't think it's anybody <laughs> realistically. And that that's arrogant because I don't think the Celtics are absolutely definitely going to storm through everybody. But I just the Bucks don't impress me as much as they should, I think. Yeah, I think we all are picking Celtics to at least reach the finals. And as far as threats, I agree Milwaukee is the most direct threat in the East, but there's not a ton of separation from them compared to the Knicks, for example. A healthy Cavaliers team is another one that comes to mind when you think about that category and that conversation. Yeah, and if if you want to talk about the Bucs, Bobby Manning put out their uh, numbers under Doc, 12 and 10 under Doc with a uh, net rating of plus 1.7, 16th in offense, 14th in defense, and uh, Middleton will be back for the second straight game today. But for what it's worth, they started 3-7, and seven, so they are 9-3 and three since that slow start under him, since there was growing pains or whatever. And like you guys mentioned, they did get the nice, uh, what was it, Charlotte, Charlotte, Philly with no Embiid, Bulls, lineup there for them to come out the all-star break and look good so this will be a little bit of a test to see how the rest of their team looks like this is kind of a bigger test for the bucks like they need to come out and prove that they can hang with the celtics i don't really know how much the celtics have to prove which is somebody said that too but it's true it's a fact i don't think the celtics have to do anything at this point because like Spoiler alert, if the Celtics lose this game, they drop from first in the East up nine and a half games to first in the East, or sorry, 10 games up to nine games up, which mm. big scary difference there. Uh, the Celtics have to go, how many games left in the season? They, they do hate 66, a double digit lead. 68, 14 games left. They have to go six and eight to win 60 games this season. If they win today, they clinch the division. <laughs> Hang yeah. the banner. Division, <laughs> all, the all important division. Um, it is funny because the like the entire top of the East, like Celtics six game win streak, Bucks two in a row, Cavs just won their last one, Knicks four, Magic four, Sixers two, and then the Celtics lead just keeps growing because they've eight and two in the last ten and won six in a row as well. So nobody in the Eastern Conference has been able to make up any ground for the last what like three months. It feels like the Celtics have ten more wins and ten fewer losses. Um, than any other team. And I know that's what a f- 10 games back means, but like thinking about it from that perspective is crazy to, to look at uh, on, on the paper. Um, I don't know this Bucks. It's been so weird watching this Bucks team play all year. Cause coming in everyone, I feel like consensus was it's the Bucks and the Celtics top, you know, top of the East. That's going to be the Eastern conference finals. And I still think it probably will be if I had to like place a bet and say who I think will meet the Celtics in the Eastern conference finals. I still think the Bucks get there, but it is, as far of a sure thing as you can get um, with some of these other teams in the East, like the Cavs, I think have a solid shot. They've been playing well post all, or excuse me. They want a big run. I mean uh, the Knicks, if they get healthy, the magic have been red hot. Like it's just, it's just a weird spot if you're the bucks. And um, I guess I can get there with like this being a prove a game for some of those bucks guys. 
Um, sorry, I had the hiccups for some of those Bucks guys. Uh, but if I'm the Bucks at the same time, if you lose this game, you're just like, oh, we didn't have Giannis, right? Like, there's just that's why I just I, I can't like get as excited for this game anymore because it's not going to matter no matter the result because there's going to be some case, narrative. Bucks fans yeah. love this. If I was a Bucks fan, I'd be pumped. Yeah, it is it is a win win or a no lose. If you're the Bucks, you get to experiment with certain things that could potentially come in handy in the playoffs. Is not even just against Boston, but if it is two three and it's you against Cleveland, or you end up playing the Knicks, some things that maybe you can utilize, especially when Giannis is on the bench, for example. But as far as the Celtics go, and I understand, oh, if they lose at home to Milwaukee without Giannis, what does that mean about them? And see, you know, people who put the Bucks over them in the playoffs can put their chest out. At the same time, I really think it is all about whatever is going to happen with the Celtics in the playoffs. And that'll tell us how, quote unquote, for real this team is, if you want to call it that. Or for those who are dubious that this is just regular season success that won't translate as well, then, you know, they'll either have to eat their words or be able to say they told you so. But in the regular season, I just don't think there's much there, even if they were to lose tonight, especially if they end up resting people as well now. It is a must rest. Has to be. <clears throat> so yeah. you, you want a lot of Jordan Walsh run tonight? Just match match the energy from Milwaukee. Like, you have to raise them. Like, this doesn't matter to you. Fine, I don't care either. No one's playing for the Celtics. That would be chess. You. Your pauses kill me, man. Because the, the last time you, you weren't <laughs> pausing, and then you stopped fully, and then that time you were pausing. And get, I, I, <sighs> that one I just thought of the chess thing after. I was done. You read it correctly. <laughs> it was. Not. It wasn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> I know. It's. I know. It's never like mean to cut me off. It's just every time I think I've got it, I. Sh I never got it. Uh, <laughs> Nasty hesitation. <laughs> it's, it's insanity. It's an elite. Punk. I wish I could do this on the basketball court. Actually, like that would be fire. Uh, I can't do it. Um, but yeah, Celtics Bucks tonight. Uh, like I said, Jalen and Drew were questionable last time. We got an injury report update from the Celtics. It feels like those guys might not play. I will say Sam Hauser was also questionable, so that is a good sign for the ankle injury thing um, in terms of how long he could be out. So good for them um, and the Celtics. Uh, hello, chat. Just catching up a little bit here. Uh, chat is saying he doesn't want to see the magic. Brian saying nobody's forgetting the Nuggets. Uh, Cavs it's true. Uh, showing. Um this is true. I mean, the Pacers are another team that if the Celtics ended up playing them, I mean, it would be exhausting. I'm not picking Indiana or anything, but it would be tiring. I wouldn't like it. Only a team to beat the Celtics twice in the East. Wouldn't love it. Yeah. It was the only team for a while, and Denver did it. So. Yeah. Um. Anyways, next thing, doubling back to the last game, uh, Derek White, triple-double. We talked about it on the pod when we discussed the Pistons game. Uh, he fought for it. He got there eventually, but he he had he had to grind for that triple double. And after the game, he admitted as much. He was like, "I didn't like it. I didn't like chasing mm -hmm. it, but I hadn't gotten it, so I wanted it." Uh, I said it then. I'll say it now. If anybody's allowed to chase a sat, I'm okay with Derek White doing it like once every blue moon. Yeah, and I mean, it's the end of a blowout game. It's his first triple double. Why not go for it? He's come close a few times, and it slipped through his fingers. And when they took the timeout, you weren't sure, is he going to be back in after this? And Joe Missoula told him, you've got about a minute left. And thankfully, he also used that break to sub Peyton Pritchard back into the game. And I think that Pritchard pointing at him as soon as he made the shot and he gets the water bath afterwards in his post-game interview. And Porzingis is talking about how can you not love this guy? He's a unique person and a unique player. I think it just speaks to... Derek White's character and who he is and how this team feels about him that they took so much joy in celebrating his success. Yeah, it, it is a great sign of like what the teammates and, and the players on this team mean to each other because they did work really hard to get Derek White that triple double, probably too hard because watching it was kind of painful. He was like having to force passes and guys were taking shots they probably wouldn't normally take and missing them and Nobody could get him that 10th assist. It took forever. And like you mentioned, like the clock was ticking. Joe Mazzullo was about to call it a day. It probably would have been a more fun story if he didn't get it. Because then everyone, we could be like, what a shame. Like Celtics aren't deep. Like 
clearly can't execute in big moments when they need to get Derek White an assist and they just keep bricking shots. So them getting that kind of a big saving grace, like then you would have the risk of this game coming in and, you know, maybe the extended bench guys getting run today too. And then not showing up on a national stage, they would really be on the hot seat. And you would have, uh, I think it was Chuck come out again and say they should bring Porzingis off the bench to help their depth problems, which they don't have. You're shameless. You're, yeah, that you're was spinning. some great talk radio work right there. <laughs> you're shameless. It's disgusting from you. <laughs> um yeah i mean i'm fine with the triple double it was fun to watch it was funny to see them sub out springer for pritchard just for him to hit the shot so Derek white could get it and get out the game uh hello michael michael peters thank you for joining in um eli yeah, saying I'm good with it. he did that uh the interview was hilarious where Derek white doesn't like stat padding was that a shot at Giannis? <laughs> your thoughts <laughs> No, absolutely. You're that, shameless. Never forget You're the time fire. Giannis threw the, right now. the rebound disgusting. to himself at the end of the game, and they took away his triple double because it was shameless horrendous. stat padding. This is horrendous for me. Hey, Ricky Davis approves. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, yeah, good for Derek White. Um, crazy that Jalen Brown had a quiet 31 in that game. Like I always think of the game. I'm like, hmm, how did everybody do? And just, it, it, I don't know. It's insane that he managed to. Um, do that quietly like i think it's a testament to how good he has been uh, over the last post all-star break that he's been able also, to do that but jalen really wanted people to know he was finishing with the left on monday he did. yeah that's, he is, that's his signature move now that's the go-to the only thing he's missing is if he has someone sitting baseline and he can put the michael jackson glove back on from all-star weekend <laughs> They sprint out there and he doesn't even put it on. He has somebody like with two hands, put the glove on his hand. Yeah. That would be fantastic. That'd be like, have imagine, him dressed up like a like, butler, put it on. He had like hand tape that was like a little bedazzled just so everyone, he, he would just go like this every once in a while, let him know. Or yeah, he could do the, he, he should actually start celebrating like this. You're right, Bobby. That do the Italian left. hand with the left hand. <laughs> let them all know he means business. And they shouldn't be ridiculing him anymore. But in all seriousness, he looks so much more under control since the All-Star break. Like, any doubts that people seriously had about him coming into the season, which were fair after what you watched in the conference finals, are all out the window. He looks great. He's under control. He's making good decisions. You saw him play against the Pistons on Monday and really take control as the number one guy. He was efficient in doing so. Yes, they were playing the Pistons, but still... I felt like he took way more shots than he did being at the game. And then I looked at the box score and I was like, wow, he shot 55%. What? So good work by Jalen. He, he did a, he has done just a great job at getting to his spots, playing his game and making the defense pay. And they can use that in the playoffs. He's going to be able to exploit smaller guys. Maybe Dame get switches onto Dame and just post him up. There's so many options to just have Jalen be a beast. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, credit to Jalen, and he needs to be, I said it before, like Tatum and Brown need to be at their best for the Celtics to get to where they want to go, uh, and they're both, I think, hitting a pretty good stride uh, as of late, so credit to them. Speaking yeah. of Tatum, oh, my uh, bad. Yeah, I just want to continue on Jalen for a second here, Jack, so it's a, little, it's a little different than falling for Sam's dream shake, I think, but um, when it comes to Jalen, I just think so many people in the summer, the discourse, when it wasn't focused on the eight turnovers against Miami was about, well, he's probably reached his ceiling and this is who he is and he's 27 now and really discounted that this is someone who, even when there was a truncated offseason while dealing with the pandemic, that he's consistently come back better after the summer. And so credit to him because he leveled up in ways that people really didn't believe could happen. And it's kind of been the story of his career. He came into the league and he was talked about as just an athlete and he can't dribble and all this. And you look at what he's evolved into, and it's pretty impressive. His growth as a facilitator is definitely something people didn't anticipate. I think people believed in his potential defensively, but now that he's really challenged himself to stay locked in more consistently at that end of the floor, he's not going to make an all-defensive team. But if you were to do a longer list and mention the guys who have consideration and just like an honorable shout-out, He's somewhere in that conversation, depending on how long you make the list. So Jalen Brown, his growth at both ends of the floor, plus like we've talked about a bunch now, him bulking up and doing more bully ball. I mean, Sam, if he gets Dame on him, he can just go straight through his chest. It's what he's been doing a lot since the All-Star break. I do give Dame credit, though. He's definitely a little bit tough here, having sitting around time just to watch boxing videos. 
he's definitely ready for any kind of battle he's going to get from Jalen in the paint. I, I just trust his toughness on that. Um, Another interesting wrinkle to this game from Jazz in the chat. Seas can use this game to test how physical they can be without refs calling for a foul. They're lucky they're not seeing Giannis today now they think about it. Giannis would just be like Godzilla running through the paint, destroying everybody. No offensive fouls. He he might suffer from that, though, and not get free throws. I don't know. But he is definitely one of the more physical guys. And with the referees kind of bending the knee on some of these ticky-tack foul calls, you may see somebody like Giannis go to another level. I don't know. It's double-edged sword. It could go either hmm. way. Yeah. Um, Sam, you mentioned there was an update on ref things. Would you like to discuss that? I don't know what that was about. An update on ref things. Yeah, Am yeah. I crazy? Who's on the game tonight? Oh, the Scott Foster wrinkle to this? <laughs> I thought you were talking about when we put the sheet together the other day and we did the no, no, Woj no. update bad. on I the phrased, No, thing. no. I phrased it weird. I phrased it weird. I, yes. I do you want me to pull it up? Do you want to pull up the video? Yeah, do you got it on lock? I have it. Did I you have tweet the it? video. I did tweet it. You want okay, to pull dude, it up? You're better at Yeah, I can I pull it. Do you pull it from the pod account or your account? My account. Okay. We we have just the Scott Foster like version of the Louvre on my Twitter account today. <laughs> the video, yeah. I'll give him credit. The Jack Harlow video was a pretty funny response. Oh yeah. There he is. The goat. <laughs> This is Paul's buddy. This, this is just my favorite Twitter video ever. <laughs> it's all time stuff. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. They have clips of him talking. You can't hear his voice. I love when he gets into it with Chris Paul in this video. I think it's part of it. <laughs> Does Scotty's this have on him the game kicking tonight, Duncan though. out from the bench. Was that him? I thought that it was. Might, um... It might have been Joey Crawford. I think that was Joey Crawford right. who kicked him out from the bench. <clears throat> but yeah, Scotty Foster on the game tonight, man. He's ready to roll. Uh, I just, I, it's just a da- damn shame. He's no, you honest. Did you see the video <laughs> of when Pat Bev was talking about how I he did. called the eight seconds on Giannis afterwards or on yeah. Thanasis at the end of the game? And Pat yeah. Bev was like, come on, wrap it up. This is a blowout. I got places to be. Yeah. And Scott, he told them, I'm going to butcher it. It's too long a story. But basically, he told him, don't make me call Chris Paul on you, Scott. And Scott Foster turns around, and Pat was like, he could have tossed me from the game. He could have done whatever. He just turns around immediately without missing a beat and goes, you don't have Chris Paul's number. <laughs> it's phenomenal. I love it. Uh, he's the GOAT. He's amazing. Um, but uh, last thing, potentially, we've got uh, LeBron talked about Jason Tatum on his new podcast with JJ Riddick. Sam and I discussed this on uh, our pod, which comes out tomorrow, but we can talk about it with y'all. No, we did the video. Here live. It's out. Um, oh, you're right. You're right. It was its own video. Um, but LeBron James uh, saying basically that Tatum's playoff resume is better than a lot of people's. He called it elite. Tatum's only 26 or 25 when they recorded it, I think. Um or and LeBron just doesn't know his birthday. Wouldn't shock me, scumbag LeBron. I was waiting for it. That's why I paused uh, for you to be. Actually, I can't swear here. Um, but LeBron basically going on this whole tangent, saying the Celtics have been great for so long. Jason Tatum's playoff resume is underrated. Um, I saw somebody come up with my TikTok saying I disagree with this. Basically, saying like Jason Tatum's teams have been so much better. It wasn't like in a nasty way, but saying like I don't think this argument is all the way fair. But Bobby, thoughts? I mean, I would clap back at the comment because Tatum was the best player on a team that went to the Eastern conference finals and nearly the NBA finals as a rookie. And so I think that the, the idea that Tatum has been on these stacked teams is not to say they're bad and he's just carrying them, but I don't think they're as good. Or I think people would be surprised when they go back and actually look at some of these rosters again, very good teams. He's had plenty of legitimate chances to win a championship by now. But LeBron's absolutely right that historically players typically don't win until they're 27 or even a little bit older in a lot of cases. And so for Tatum at 26 to have gone to at least the Eastern Conference Finals four out of six years since coming into the league to reach the NBA Finals and get within two wins of a title to reach the all NBA first team twice already and to make an all NBA squad three times. It just speaks to him being elite in terms of what he's accomplished individually and the success that he's led his team to. Yeah, this is a funny thing, Jack. You know what I just had pop into my head? You know how when we watch the Celtics, right? Let's pull 
Remember last year when they had like nobody play against Milwaukee and the game went into overtime? Yeah. And I came on the pod upset because they didn't win. Yeah. That is what this is for Jason Tatum. Should they have been in the Eastern Conference Finals four times? Maybe, maybe not. But when you are there, it feels like you should win. They definitely should have won the finals. They probably should have beat Miami last year. They Not even in the game seven. They should have just took care of business from the jump after having two playoff series go far too long in the first two rounds. You think they would have kind of locked in and been like, all right, we're done playing around, but they didn't. And then the bubble heat series was out of nowhere. It felt like they should have won that too. So there's all these different instances that people remember them coming up short. And that's why it's an indictment on him. Not so much for it, when you take a step back and you look at it from the wide lens, you're like, Oh wow. Like, yes. Like everything LeBron's saying is right. Like, Yes, like at 26, four conference finals, one NBA finals appearance. That's incredible. Nobody does that. But when you just have the way it went in front of you and you're just like, ah, I feel like they could have got more out of this. That's why people hold it against Tatum. Now, I did write about this for Celtics blog. It was mostly aggregation, but I tied in a few storylines. The windy thing from earlier this year when he was like, hey, people aren't voting him for MVP because of the 2022 finals, they're still holding it against him. That is also a little bit of like what LeBron is defending against. It's like, yes, they have not gotten over the hump yet, but the fact that they are there is incredible. And they should be like commended for that instead of having it held against them. Everyone's just like Tatum sucks. They can't win a championship, blah, 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 blah. And I think we all feel that like this year, if they don't win, help us. But the the fact that it is a national storyline where people are just like, yeah, not sure how good he is. Kind of unfair. Yeah, I think the important context as well is like in the moment, like, of course, if you do, you should win. But I also think it's important to take a step back and then realize in hindsight, like how impressive it was. Not just saying like you were there, you should have won. But like in the moment, think that. But then after stepping back, realizing, okay, it's impressive that they got there. It's impressive what they've been able to do. And so I, I think both things can be true. Um, and yeah, Jazz, the whole Allen Ivers thing was fun. Same when I did talk. That was we talked about on the pod. Now, and about Allen Ivers. I kind of forgot <laughs> that we released those videos separate because we did them all yesterday. And when I saw that comment this morning from Jazz, I was like, is he making fun of my neck? No. But no, <laughs> the video of us talking about Allen Iverson is just not out yet. So. No. There's so many good clips from Jay Williams on podcasts, especially the one with Haslam. Which one are you talking mm-hmm. about? So I don't know. He went on with Haslam and Mike Miller, and I, I'm maybe you didn't. Great but, podcast. Uh, like the one OGs. of his stories, Jason Williams, is that he coached a high school all star game, and two minutes in, the director who put the event together taps him on the shoulder, and he goes. Why isn't number two in the game right now? He goes, is he supposed to be in? He goes, yeah, he's the best player in the country. And he goes, all right, timeout. He goes, you go in. And it was Anthony Edwards. So he just played him the rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's that's all I got. Bobby, do you have anything else you wanted to talk about before we get into trivia? No, let's get to trivia. Trivia. All right. Big day. <clears throat> yeah, Sam, you're looking for a bounce back, huh? I've lost three Great straight, rock. all on the last question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or on the last answer, I should say, because it's one Trying question. to ride this momentum. So, today, we're going to be doing... Let me pull up the Google Holy Sheets just so everything ready. Tur- everybody turn the chat off. Chat's off. Uh, or, I guess, everybody, the two of you, turn the chat off. Um, since 2010, so we're doing... Uh, yeah, right. We're doing current. So, from 20, 2009, 2010 on to now... The most points scored in a single overtime period by a Celtic. So wow. who scored the most points in a single overtime period? We were going to do fourth quarter. Uh, I thought, <coughs> excuse me, this was more fun, would lead to better uh, results. I almost just shared the screen uh, of the uh, what the <laughs> answers rather than the um, this. <clears throat> so here we go. So it is most points scored in a single Overtime period by Celtic since 2010 or 2009-10. Okay. And Bobby won the last one barely, so Bobby, you'll get to go first. Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce. Let's take a look here. Paul Pierce gets you 
12 points. Oh. Tatum. <laughs> Jason Tatum. Gets you 12 points. Ooh, touche. <laughs> Match. <laughs> right there. <laughs> You're in tennis when they do with the rackets. Good rally. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Chapa, that is, I'm pretty sure that's a pretty good answer. Isaiah right. Thomas. Isaiah yes. Thomas. Isaiah Thomas gets you eight points. Ooh. Really? That's it? <laughs> that is in fact it <laughs> so, I mean we can't pretend like I have a great guest just sitting here Rondo Rondo alright let's see that's not I, have to, I, have, I literally yeah. switched tab to control F <laughs> like it takes me more than like too good of like a question minutes. to blow it and let us see the answers I have a giant stat head with multiple duplicate names it takes me a second brother um, uh, you were correct though it's only six so it's tough <laughs> Bobby back to you Ray Jay Allen Lynch. Ray Allen uh, let's see just gotta make sure I get the top one alright yep Ray Allen gets you five points. Wow. That's it? I guess yes. I just keep saying that to Bobby's <laughs> guesses. I'm not even trying to like insult him. As if you didn't get six on the last I was going to say, it's one less than your second guess. <laughs> I call him Kettle Black here, pal. <laughs> I'm going to guess Jalen. Jalen Brown. It's going to be more than five. Gets you. I hope so. 11. Ooh. All right, good guess. <clears throat> do you have the game? Yeah, do you want to know what that it, game is was? Is it Orlando when he had 50? No. Uh, that was... No, that's not in here. Huh. Did that go to OT? I don't think I went to OT, did it? Maybe it was the fourth quarter. <clears throat> was it the Knicks game? Uh, no, the opening night one when he had 46. It was last year against the Lakers. Oh, I would not, I did not remember that. Mm-hmm. Huh. Michael, that is a solid guess. It's not terrible, but it's not top to top. And this is regular season only, by the way. I, I figured that was implied, but yeah. Did not know that. Well, not that it matters, but. Everything we've ever done. Unless I say playoffs, then it's. I will go with Kyrie. Oh, that was my next guess. Oh, <laughs> uh, Kyrie gets you 12. Well, funny how that one didn't take you a while, Jack, because it was a good guess, huh? Giving me a hard time. When I'm sorry, I was like, I knew the, sorry, I knew the you top of the to list. Look. <laughs> that's what I mean. That's what I was like. Oh, you have to look like that's not good. Oh, yeah, because it's literally the no, first no, no. one on the list, brother. Exactly. Like, yeah, no crap. <laughs> but it's not even like you waited like 30 seconds for me to look. You waited. It was mm, okay. My Anytime tab hadn't like, even, oh, hold on. Sam, my tab hadn't even loaded yet when you started giving me crap. Like, I you switched tabs a- and it hadn't even loaded. <laughs> you bum. Guess, <laughs> Mr. Six. All right, pal. Uh, it's a good question, man. Good job, Jack. Loser. Yes, Kemba. Somebody just guessed that in the chat. And I need to look because I That's bad. didn't look when he asked. Correct. <laughs> uh, six. Yep, bad. I was hoping you'd go lower. <laughs> Still anybody's game. Oh, you have it so it adds the column? Nope, I've been doing it manually. <laughs> There's going to need to be some filibustering right now. <laughs> it's a tough spot to be in. Sorry. Right. Good filibuster. Good job. Keep it up. Uh, just ink. I- I'm going to put it up here just because I don't think any of you are guessing. Respe- no, Noah Vonley is not the answer, Eli. Oh, I respect. Okay. I'm going to need Kyrie a Was Kyrie the Raptors game or, or was it Christmas? Kyrie 
did it Philly. on where is my tab he did that's it was it uh, dallas it's washington in 2018 hmm don't remember hmm. that someone guessed this already right yeah do you know can you know when tatum's was so uh, sam this is against if Spurs. you don't want sam if you what don't want Minnesota? jack to an- sam if you don't want jack to answer this he won't I'm okay. curious if the chat has the highest person left on the board. You can answer that. Left on the board, you said? So if the whoever's at the top of the list of remaining available names, I'm curious <laughs> if the chat has gotten no. that. Uh, I can double check, but I don't think anybody has said it, no. Oh, boy. Yeah, no. Uh, <clears throat> Not bad guesses, Michael Jared. Uh, jazz. I don't know if that's up here. I don't think so. No, that one's not up there. It's a shame because there was someone who went off in a playoff game. I highly doubt that's, you ever did it. Yeah. Top. Eli, I don't think that's up there, Eli. It's on the board, but it's not like the one. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, Chapa, I don't know. And I'll check the other one. Um Yeah, Jazz and Chapa, those are none of neither of those are really up there. Or Chapa, yours isn't even on the list that I've got, but uh Ch- um Jazz, yours is there. Yeah, that's the same as Jazz as Michael. It, it's on the list, but it's not like great. Uh Michael, this is 2010 forward, so I don't think that'll be on there. <laughs> all right i will finally you gotta concede <laughs> Fine. no 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 can you imagine passing right now um what do we got i don't love any of the names that come to mind so i will take a chance on Derek white Derek white oh boy Let's see this might be good for me <sighs> Hate to break it to you, Sam, but it is not good for you. That is 10. That means <laughs> 10. I probably can't win. Uh, you cannot, no. He, he I'll guess. It with that. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll guess Marcus. Marcus. Uh, Marcus Smart uh, gets you seven. Um, a good guess. <clears throat> that was a good pull by what? Bobby. What yeah, game that was, was the Derek time. White one? Derek White was Must this year recent. in Detroit this season. <laughs> mm-hmm. Can I tell uh, you? One of the thoughts I had is that I wonder if Jack came up with this because Jeff Green went off in overtime one year. I did not. It wasn't <laughs> Jeff Green. I to guess that, though. I didn't feel good enough about it to guess, but I, w- I was worried that was going to be like proven in hindsight. I will say, you guys missed a 10-pointer, a 9-pointer, and some 7s. I think Avery Bradley was in my head, too. Mm-hmm. And then nobody Terry guessed Rozier KG. Was in my head. Neither of those. Avery Bradley is 5. Kevin Garnett was four. Oof. Or sorry, Kevin Garnett was six, but yeah, neither were the ten or the nine. Do you want to keep going or do Hell you want to tell you? No, he is a seven though, so that wouldn't be a terrible. Did Al uh, ever have a big overtime game? No, Horford's is four. Oh, did, didn't Porzingis have a good game against Detroit too? Mm, Porzingis is six against Detroit. One, so the, the last ten pointer did it on December 3rd, 2014 against Detroit. If the chat gets it, I'll put it on the board. So 2014, December is the 10-point overtime game for this guy. And they won the game. It wasn't Evan Turner, was it? Mm-mm. Not Turner, no. Was it Sullinger? Yeah, he had 10. So he had 10. Against who? Uh, Detroit, and they won the game. The nine-pointer was on October 25th, 2021. That was opening night. 2021. They won against... uh, Or Sorry, yeah, they won against... They won against Charlotte on October 25th, 2021. Was it Rob? Mm-mm. 
2021 against Charlotte on October 5th? October 25th. Oh, yes. October. Eli beat you to the punch. Dennis Schroeder, nine points. Uh, we would never have guessed that, to be well, honest. Done, Eli. <laughs> Props. Also, boy, Eli. first thought when you said that I won, Michael Hilly, I expect you to order that Petrus jersey. Yeah, <laughs> that is a, a series. Um, what did we say we would do next series? Oh, the lifeline. Yeah, you the guys lifeline like three in the last chat. Um, but uh, you got it. Yeah, <laughs> it is Dennis Schroeder. <laughs> he goes, I was joking. Um it is not Tristan. Michael goes, if it was Tristan Thompson, I'd get his jersey. Luckily, you're saved. Um, don't worry about it. But uh, any final thoughts, Bob, before we get out of here with your trophy in hand? No, I'll see everyone at the parade. <laughs> that is I three titles. <laughs> three, hey, three either titles way, we're going to party. <laughs> I will say you turned it around, Bobby. This format, you were down in the dumps smoked. about it. And then, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, the, I, I thought Sam might break the brooms out on me. I was for the sake of content. I was uh, I was hoping you hit a a seven pointer, so Sam had a chance to win at least. Just so it came down to the final question yeah. again for content's sake. But I was quite. I alas. exhaled when you told me that I had clinched. I would have lost anyways. Yes. Hit the like button. Also, while we have you captive here, um, I put it in the description. But we opened a March Madness pool. If you'd like I to join, um, Bobby, you can join too. But H, how about them Celtics? March Madness. I'll put it on the screen so you guys know what it looks like. Um, Excuse me, it's right here. How about them Celtics? The logo is the green rocket ship because it's the only green logo we could find. We did our bracket on the pod that airs tomorrow. I did one. My dad's done one already. Sam's going to do his. Bobby, you're welcome to do it as well. Definitely. Um, so chat, if you're here watching on YouTube or, or Twitter or anything, um, it should be in the description. If not, just go to um search espn march madness tournament challenge or something like that get to the groups screen and then search how about them celtics with the apostrophe uh in front of the bout uh, just like it appears on the youtube channel so everyone can join um if you enter your bracket whoever wins the bracket we're just going to give free merch to or in pop Nito. so you'll get something if you win the bracket so make sure to head uh over there join it the link should be in the description anyways Thank you all for tuning in. Make sure to leave a like on the video. Check out Bobby's work at si.com slash NBA slash Celtics. And I'll let Sam take it up. Hey, thank you very much for watching. If you're with us live, we appreciate that. It's a ton of fun doing the Talk and See streams. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell. Leave a like. And you won't miss any of our daily content going up. We have pods Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. These shows are Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Game recaps the day after. All games a half hour before we will be live. For pregame, who doesn't love it? Make sure you give Bobby a follow on Twitter at Bobby Kravitsky. Like Jack said, you can find all of his Celtics coverage for SI Media on Inside the Celtics. Great coverage. He's at the games, he's at practices. You want to follow him. You can also find our show on Spotify and Apple. The audio pods and game recaps are uploaded there. So if you leave a five-star review, we would appreciate that. If you want to email us, you can do so at hbtcpod at gmail.com. We go through your emails each show. And we give you feedback. You can find our socials at How About Them Seas. That's for Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. The Facebook is just the name of the podcast. All streams are there. They're on YouTube and they're on Twitter. Jack's Twitter is at Jack's NBA. My Twitter is at Sam LaFrance NBA. That's it for us. Bye.